At the monster quarters, a young man named Rain who's a slime trainer was greeted with excitement by his slime Pem, often regarded as the weakest monster. Despite this, he eagerly invited Pem to commence their training. The monster and trainer cultivation academy known as Bijiam sprawled across a vast campus dedicated to nurturing both monsters and trainers, since in this world every individual is bestowed with a monster's crest from birth. With that power, they can put monsters to use and on rare occasions. That strength has a great impact on the trainers' lives, where they enroll in the academy and devote themselves to constant training that makes that possibility blossoms all the more and in time gain status or achieve great dreams, such as becoming one of the knights who protect the king. During their training, Rain noticed that Pem's power had dropped a lot after only dealing 53 points of damage. Nevertheless, he still urged him to slow down his pace because he still had another 341 shots that he must give all he got. And at this rate, he will miss out on the Dorm Lei's special bento. Upon hearing this, Pem's spirit immediately rises up to go full throttle. However, a girl interrupted them using her dragon's breath spiral, and then proceeded to tell Rain that this is what an attack is, and that practicing every morning at a low level of power are games suitable for a slime trainer like him. However, Rain pointed out to the girl named Arena that before she tells people what is and is not an attack, it's better for her to go back and retake basic etiquette. But Arena replied back that it seemed appropriate for her to assume an immature attitude with an immature opponent but he just thanked her in response for being a role model and provoking so early in the morning, but he didn't have any free time to spar with her. However, she called on her dragon keel and used a breath spiral to stop Rain from getting away and exclaimed that they are not done yet. She then pointed out that her ranking was been bestowed the dragon crest and his are completely different. Since among the many kinds of monsters that exist, gods and dragons are the two greatest kinds of monster that possess colossal power and intellect, so if a commoner inherits one of these crests, he may be welcomed into the royal family. However, Kiel, who's a horse dragon capable of telepathic communication due to its intelligence, unexpectedly apologized to Rain for its master's actions that seems to be always different from her usual demeanor when it comes to Rain. Just like how she exclaimed that a dragon trainer being beaten by a slime and its trainer is absolutely beyond belief, since there is no one who would lose to a slime. However, this reminded her of something so she started declaring that it was an unofficial match, so she didn't accept the conclusion. In response, Rain assured her that she's right since she picked up a fight with him out of the blue behind the school building, so there's no record. Furthermore, he doesn't want words to spread around either but if she goes and makes a fool of Pem, he will really get angry but hearing this piqued her interest. With that, she urged him to set aside his anger for now, as they would engage in simulator training, so that they could pair up for the next extracurricular lesson party, where she could demonstrate their differing statuses through a formal duel. Following that, Kiel continued to apologize for his master's discourtesy while Rain on the other hand, was left feeling regretful for not being able to complete their morning training. Later during a match, they were interrupted by the referee who declared the result of their morning match to be a draw. But Rain felt somewhat disappointed since the time was too short, but he also thinks that not losing is good at least. So he then proceeded to look for a place to eat but he noticed how the crowds tend to gather around those high-class trainers. To which a guy named Gazette also agreed, since if they can win the heart of one of the opposite sexes, who possesses a rare crest, then they may obtain prosperity for their descendants, because it's possible that high-ranking crests may manifest through genes. Just like how he is being invited by the girls to eat lunch together, but he always replied that he already has a previous engagement. Setting that aside, he pointed out that Rain seems to be getting rough treatment again but Rain answered that he's already getting used to it by now. Furthermore, Rain also thinks that Gazette's spirit crest may not be god or a dragon, but it's still really popular to which Gazette also agreed since with a spirit crest. As long as it is a monster that retains that attribute then the ability makes it possible to contract with any type. He even mentioned the possibility of contracting with that dragon, prompting Rain to inquire about Gazette's true desires. Gazette then directed him to a girl named Alice and her monster Leon, who belongs to the Ice Wolf family and exhibits strong protective instincts. He then pointed out that Gazette and Alice are always together, to which Alice explained that they are childhood friends while Gazette added that even when he's alone, Rain and Alice always call out to him when he's obviously different from them, which made Rain think that he's making them go through such trouble. But Alice remarked that her crest is not particularly special and chastised Gazette for teasing Rain. It's true that Alice's crest, wolf type, is actually not rare at all, but when it comes to boys, she's popular enough to have a fan club and because of that, Gazette and her partner Leon don't let anyone approach her. Putting that aside, Alice then invited them to share some food, 
and she even mentioned to Rain that she had prepared a bento for monsters, especially for Pem. However, he couldn't help but think that her food looked so delicious that it would be wasted on Pem. Nonetheless, he wondered if it was alright for her to give it to them, so Gazette reassured him, saying that it was fine since Alice had gotten up early just to prepare it for the two of them, which made Alice feel embarrassed since she thinks that it might not have suited his tastes, and that Rain must be so tired today. However, Gazette interrupted her, and pointed out that it's precisely because Rain is tired so she's enticing him with food, and she's feeding him to bring him closer. Furthermore, he knows that what she made today was specifically for Pem, since she's still practicing for the real thing. This is evident as she's engaged in image training, envisioning how she will eventually feed Rain. Nonetheless, she reminded them that they didn't have to force themselves to eat but Pem was already stuck after devouring the bento. So Rain could only apologize and promise that he will give him stern discipline by giving him a special evening training that will make the demons cry. But Alice was actually glad by it, and felt that this atmosphere has a secure feeling. However, their conversation was abruptly interrupted by a guy lamenting about his draw with Rain, and that not being able to beat a small fry slime like that is such a disaster. Despite this setback, he boasted about sustaining damage in a previous match and claimed that without the time limit, he would have undoubtedly secured a decisive victory. Leon then clenched his teeth in response, but Rain motioned for him to let the guy continue his tirade. However, the guy suddenly approached him and even belittled him for not having any aura at all that he didn't notice him. But Rain continued talking with the others, which agitated the guy and ordered him to answer him so Rain then barked at him and asked if that's enough for him to get lost. But this angered the guy more, so another boy intervened and advised him not to get worked up over someone as lowly ranked as Rain, who occupied the 231st position out of 250 in the current rankings. But Rain corrected him and asserted that he was actually ranked 230th, but the guy continued to exclaim that Gazette held the 123rd position to which Gazette confirmed, and both him and Rain were even happy about it, which irritated the guy even more, and exclaimed that today's mock battle, attacks and contracting bonds against the trainer were forbidden and the time was too short. But if it had been a real fight, he's confident that there's no way his goblin could have lost to his slime, since it's a difference in status. Upon hearing this, Rain then asked him if he wanted a real fight which took him by surprise. But they were interrupted by Arena, who happened to overheard them, and made Gazette declare that the third rank in the academic year rankings has come. Without further ado, she immediately reprimanded the guy for talking about their difference in status which made her sick, so she questioned him if he has no pride for saying such words or whether he is that confident in his own abilities. And if that's the case, then her keel will be his opponent's, since it seems that what he really wanted was a real battle. And if he happens to win against her, then she will permit him to rise 10 ranks higher, and will also give him her emblem. However, his spirit had already vanished and he immediately ran away, so Arena was left looking like a hero, but she thought they were spouting nonsense. So she proceeded to question Rain instead, asking why he took all those insults without saying anything back. In response, he explained that if he stands up to people like him, there will be no end to them. Nonetheless, he's already used to dealing with that level of conversation on a daily basis, but Alice also thinks that he can't just let them talk to him like that. With that, he began to wonder why she's making a fuss about it, so Arena then shouted that when they make a fool of him like that, it hurts her so much. But hearing this confused him, including the others who were immediately enveloped in a weird atmosphere. So they asked Arena what that word she just said was. She then tried to retract the words she said and soon realized, so she quickly clarified that it's not what she meant to say. However, they already misunderstood her for being interested in Ray, which took them by surprise. But this made her furious, so she quickly grabbed Rain and ordered him to do something because this is the first time she has been humiliated in her entire life, even though he didn't do anything. So he just took pity on her which angered her more, and declared that it's a shame upon her family name to be mistakenly lumped with a slime trainer. With that, she asked him to take responsibility for causing such a significant embarrassment for her, but he reminded her that she was the one who got involved when she wasn't supposed to be speaking out of turn. As a result, Keel apologized to Rain for the trouble his master caused him, but Rain assured him that it's fine and requested him to help his master understand. However, Keel answered that when Arena is like this, no voice can reach her but what could stop her is something like an elder sister like the student council president. Nonetheless, Keel also believes that when it comes to Arena, Rain himself is not entirely ineffective as Keel on the other hand, is more like a father figure. Following that, Arena then invited him to a match, since they would be having the first afternoon match, where she promised to teach him a lesson. 
and if she wins, he will have to declare before the entire student body the words, I have no interest in women, to which he immediately disagreed as it would imply that he prefers men. He then proceeded to ask her why he needed to agree to such a condition and what he would gain from it. In response, she stated that if by some slim chance he wins, then she will agree to one thing he says and become his lover, which surprised everyone. However, Irina is confident that against a slime trainer like him, there's no way she could lose, so she then exclaimed that she will show him what it means to be of different status, though Rain thinks that she's a hopeless idiot. As the afternoon match commenced, the other students immediately went to watch Arena and Rain's match. However, Rain reminded them to focus on their own battles, though Arena thought that he should also concentrate on the battle before his eyes. But Rain exclaimed that he actually didn't care and asked her instead how long she was going to call him by his full name. In response, she stated that if he won then she would call him whatever he liked, and she would also become his slave, but Rain stopped her from saying things that made him look like a bad guy. Nevertheless, she quickly asked him to get the match started since her body is tingling all over, which made him declare that he's actually eagerly anticipating this fight with her, making her wonder what joke he's pulling now. With that, the others could already feel their spirits as they watched them. Without further ado, Rain reminded Pem to proceed as usual while Arena assured Kiel that there was no need for him to hold back his power since she couldn't forget the frustration she felt. However, Kiel reminded her that this was still a mock battle which she already knew. He then asked her why she was averting her eyes from him, since the simulated battle was different from a ranking fight because its objective was to measure the balance of power between all the students. Therefore, attacks carrying danger against the partner and the use of the trainer's greatly exhausting contracting bond were forbidden. In response, Arena simply asked him to roast Rain and Pem, but he suggested that if she could give the fight her undivided attention, then both he and the slime would unleash their full power. Upon hearing this, she immediately agreed in order to defeat Rain, while others commented that no matter how spirited someone is, Kiel is still a highest-ranked monster, and a slime is said to be weaker than an actual human so the difference in level is too great. But that's exactly why Rain thinks that this would be interesting. With that, the announcer finally called Rain and his partner Pem, as well as Arena and her partner Kiel to put the reputation of their crest and their partner on the line. As the others observed their battle, Arena immediately ordered Kiel to splat Pem, but Rain managed to command him to jump which Arena didn't want to happen. So Kiel swiftly dragged the ground with its claw, which made the others think that it was over in an instant, but they were wrong. So Arena directed Kiel below, which Rain considered too slow, as he had already ordered Pem to use a ramming attack. Upon seeing it, the others were surprised that he managed a grazing counter against a dragon opponent even though he was flattened, but he was still in high spirits. However, his attack made the others laugh because it might take him many years to defeat a dragon with that move, so they assured Pem that they wouldn't say anything bad so he could retreat before he got hurt. On the other hand, Arena checks on Kiel for any abnormalities, but he answers that there is no poison or paralysis, and they are just simple ramming attacks like before. Regardless of that, she still reminded him not to drop his guard since she doesn't wish to suffer defeat against these guys again to which Kiel agreed, considering the opponent is just a mere slime, so there's no way he could be defeated. However, she also considers that a single attack should decide things this time too since he was able to counterattack, so those two make for an utterly enigmatic combo, which she then comes to recognize, but she declares that it's exactly why they cannot afford to lose, so she then readies Kiel for the next move. However, she noticed Rain trying to make Pem stay alert since he became cocky right away, though she wonders if this is some kind of mental attack that reduces their will to attack and stay on guard. But even though it's a strong psychological attack, she can't deny how adorable Pem is so she immediately hit her head to not be derailed and inform Rain that she won't be able to concentrate on the fight. In response, he declares that he will be adding a condition for when he wins, and that is that she not call him by his full name, but Arena then also declares that if she wins, she gets to sleep with him once which surprised everyone, especially Erica. So Rain then asked Arena if she realized what she was saying, to which she answered that he does it a lot, but they quickly misunderstood it and started talking about how Rain never shows interest in girls, but Arena says that he does it a lot. With that, he tried to clarify that he hasn't done that even once while Arena on the other hand, began to ask them what's going on. So he answered that it's because she's saying weird stuff and requested her to think over what she just said. Upon hearing this, she reprimanded him for making a request with that attitude and began to think over what she just said. After realizing it, she immediately clarified that what she meant is to cuddle with Pem and not to bed with Rain. With that, the others finally understood, while Rain then asked Kiel to just be the one to explain human words to his master, 
though he answered that he's just a dragon. Putting that aside, he began to call Pem again but he was halted by Arima who questioned whether they intended to spread rumors about her foolishness. However, Kiel's alarm surged as she brandished the explode claw, prompting him to hastily warn everyone to flee. As a result, the platform began to break and hurl them all away, while Arena remained standing with a vengeful determination to make them pay. In response, they told Arena she couldn't use the contracting bond because it was against the rules and the competition area was gone anyway. All the others looked for help to stop her, but since she was a dragon trainer, they just ran away. On the other hand, Kiel tried to calm her down but she didn't listen as she wanted to shut everyone up so they wouldn't talk about her mistake. Suddenly Pem started attacking her but Kiel quickly intervened to stop it. So she then reminded Rain that direct attacks on trainers were against the rules in mock battles but he retorted, saying she had no right to criticize him after she had invoked her contracting bond. Meanwhile, the others urged Rain to flee since the match was no longer valid, which made Gazette also laugh at how much of an idiot Rain. Though Gazette himself did not run off, informed Rain that Leon made an instant ice wall, but it's already coming apart. Regardless, he still asked him what he will do with Arena, who's throwing a tantrum but at the moment, Erica might be able to stop her using the power of friendship. However, he answered that this is his fight so no one must touch her, to which Gazette accepted and assured him that they will remain as spectators, but he still asked them to get back, though Gazette asked him not to worry about them because they are stronger than him after all. Following that, he began reprimanding Arena for still wanting to continue after she blew away the platform, but she answered that she would first exterminate the root cause and that would be him since he was the first one to attack her. And from this point on, they will conduct this as a ranking battle, but he doesn't need to consider this as a death match since she's still kind after all. Upon hearing this, he immediately assumed that contracting bonds are of course in play which made her call him a fool for thinking that he could stand for a second against her without a contracting bond. With that, he declared that it's just what he wanted and immediately called upon Pem to do it. The contract bond is an action that ties the lives of trainer and monster together as one for great mutual benefit, where they both shared statuses up but also shared damage and exhaustion afterward, so it's prohibited in simulation battles because of the high risk involved. But none of that matters to Arena now, and there's no need to make changes for them, as she ordered Kiel to use Mega Flare, which made him hope that Rain and Pem won't die. Witnessing Arena's escalating fury, Rain sought permission from Alice and Leon to have Pem use the water from the ice wall Leon had conjured to shield Alice from the flames. Then he employed the splinter technique to create multiple Pems for attack, but Kiel promptly dispelled them. Arena then accused Rain of resorting to underhanded tactics, while also commanding Kiel to incinerate them all. However, Rain swiftly retreated and this revealed that the splinter maneuver was merely a distraction as she had suspected. But Mega Flare was just a diversion so she asked Kiel to shoot them with flame arrows to finish him off. However, he managed to skillfully fend off all the dragon's attacks, which surprised them but they also know that since slimes are inferior to other monsters, he will naturally train himself to make up that difference. Furthermore, contracting bonds raise the physical abilities of monster and trainer together and reconsiders monster characteristics to the trainer. But Rain's monster is a slime so that alone won't help him ward off dragon attacks. On the flip side, Arena pointed out that Rain always confronts Kiel's attacks head on and dodges them, which she finds peculiar. Despite this, she still had more attacks up her sleeve and managed to catch him off guard. This prompted Rain to consider using Splinter, but he realized he couldn't do it in time. Fortunately, Hem sacrificed himself to shield Rain from the explosion. Witnessing this, Irina questioned if she had gone too far again, but she suddenly felt a pang of pain and speculated that it might be transferred damage from the contract. She then checked on Kiel, who had been hit by a splinter piece that Irina thought had already been blown away. So Rain explained that when Irina was executing her Mega Flare, he had the main one with him and that he kept it on his shoulder as a decoy without being afraid of a direct hit. With that, Kiel reminded Arena not to fall into confusion to which she answered that she already knew that the ramming attack wasn't worth her notice, but to take such a risk to inflict so little damage, she wondered what Rain is thinking. Nevertheless, she still continued by using Blaze Spiral but Rain commented that he wouldn't do that if he was her since the splinters already sealed Kiel's mouth. In response, she ordered Kiel to tear it off but it's no use since animals have strength when it comes to closing their mouths, but they are weak at opening them. With that, he ordered Pem to counter using ramming attacks though the others already expected that his counterattacks would have no effect at all, to which Arena also agreed since the only skill he has is ramming attack from the first time they first hit them and it's weak. However, he may display some tricks but this won't be anything like the accident that happened last time. 
yet she still asks him what he is really plotting to which he answers that he also doesn't know. As they observe Pem preparing to unleash everything in one shot, she decides to put an end to the charade and commands Kiel to engulf everything with Crimson Wing. In response, he instructed Pem to gather the splinters and affirmed his belief in him. However, she warned them that there was nowhere left to escape, and even if he still had strength, the battle was over. But he disagreed and questioned her if she was comfortable letting her guard down with such arrogance in her eyes. Perplexed by it, she pointed out his partner who had been blown away. But he countered by saying that the ones who should be vigilant are them, and he asked if she knew the phrase darkest under the lamppost, which means that it's harder to see directly under the lamppost because it's darker there than in the surrounding area where the light shines. With that, Pem emerged and charged at Kiel with full force, but Arena quickly realized he was hiding directly underneath and ordered Kiel to eliminate him. After Pem was blown away, she questioned Rain and pointed out that if that was his full power, he would have been better off not attacking and not letting Pem split apart. But he answered that because of all that, the two of them will have to carry this experience with them, which confused her. Suddenly, she felt something happening and it's the same as back then. And it seems that Pem's wounds are healing just like that which is beyond belief. After that, Rain finally called Pem to give them a counterattack with sublimation, which is a blessing of the earth and air that occurs when a monster surpasses the set limits of its accumulated experience points. Moreover, it significantly amplified the ability to heal wounds dozens of times over. However, sublimation isn't something that just occurs randomly but Kiel reminded her that it's similar to when they fought before, which they had thought was impossible to happen twice. Despite that, Rain still expressed gratitude for her genuine fight against him, which confused her so he clarified that it was enjoyable and they should do it again. Consequently, he instructed Pem to cease the tricks to go full throttle and ram it home. As Kiel took the hits, they observed Pem getting faster with each successive blow that Arena did not expect. After that, the match concluded with Rain and Pem emerging as the winners. However, the others could not believe that Rain managed to beat Arena and her dragon. Regardless of that, the two were happy so Rain suggested that as a reward, they will do double the training regimen. On the other hand, Izette handed him a towel and commended him, while also asking if he should say something to Arena. But he answered that the victor talking to the loser will only make it worse, to which Gazette already expected that a born-to-lose slime user like him would really say something out of the ordinary. In response, he explained that if he leaves Arena to Alice then she will be fine because they are roommates after all. Setting that aside, Gazette pointed out that he should be a little happy at least, since the day a trainer beats a dragon user would call for delightful celebration, and even send a letter back to his hometown, but this made Rain ask him if he thought he was going to lose. In response, he answered that he's utterly too suited for each other and moreover, Today's completion is just one battle, since all expectations were for a one-hit KO by Kiel, and if Pem was knocked out, he wouldn't be able to appear in any further matches, and winning by default would mean the student's real ability couldn't be measured so it was put together with his loss as presumed, and it makes him think of how it is for the Diet Assembly, while Rain was left wanting to request for an appeal. However, they were interrupted by Arena, who immediately approached and grabbed Rain in an attempt to kiss him, but he stopped her and questioned what got into her. In response, she asked him why he's resisting when it's his fault that her lips were stolen for all the world to see, but he answered that she was the one who forcefully stole the lips. But hearing this made him wonder that if he refused a maiden's lips, then he must be into men but she was rammed by Pem. So Rain then asked Kiel to explain to him what Arena said, and Kiel answered that it's most likely a result of her promise, which is that she will become his lover. Kiel then further asked him not to be so hard on her since his master is quite superior for a human female and if he does say so himself, he wonders if Rain has some objection. However, he thinks that something about this is wrong which annoyed her so she ordered him to show her how she deals with a girl, but he asked her to stop, and also asked if she even wanted to date him to which she answered no, so he declared that there is no need for this farce, but she thought that he's calling her pride farce, so he explained that the condition of the match was the winner can give the loser any single order, so that's why he has no intention of telling her to become his lover, and she has no obligation to go out with him but she asked him why, and proceed to tell him that even if he doesn't order her to do it, she already declares that she would become his lover and as a member of the Meyer Newberg family, she can't easily go back on her own word though he thinks that she's just using her family social standing. Moreover, she reprimanded him for his annoyed look and added that as his lover, it would bring upon her character for him to have such an expression and it's to the point of being offensive. Aside from him, Kiel also asked him to just give up since when Arena is like this, 
he would have to be her elder sister to stop her. In response, he requested Kiel to call that said sister and tell her that her little sister is dating a guy with dubious origin, but there's nothing they can do about it, so they decided to just forget the nonsense Kiel said. Regardless, Kiel still thinks that since Rain is not paired up with anybody else, he should try going out with Irina and enjoy it. However, upon hearing the suggestion about being paired up, he immediately remembers that he can do that. While Irina assumes that he has finally made up his mind to go out with her, he informs her that he can't do so which frustrates her even more. So he explains that he's currently going out with Alice, but Alice seems not to understand, prompting her to ask him what he means. Upon realizing it, she suddenly faints and they quickly call for a stretcher to assist her. The next day, she woke up calling Rain a jerk and realized that she did actually faint after he said that so suddenly. But Rain really did win against Arena, which made her wonder if that wasn't a dream. And he's the same Rain who used to be bullied by other students for being a slime trainer. However, he never talked back against them, and that was the first time Alice saw him, when he was being tormented by other students because of his crest. Regardless of that, he still continued to put on a smile and train with Pem. Following that, he never gave up or made excuses about having a slime crest, and that's why he made it this far. Upon thinking about it, she realized that Rain is really amazing with the way things are right now isn't something that they could call normal, since their relationships are something they can't properly explain. Putting that aside, she proceeded to get ready and even cite her morning prayers before she said goodbye to Irina. Later at the dining hall kitchen, she was greeted by a woman named Mero, who then immediately teased her for raising her chest well. All the others added that they ripened even more. Setting that aside, Alice actually aims to be a culinary master who makes food for monsters, so she comes to the dormitory's kitchen where everyone is really nice, especially Mero who's the head chief, and also the woman she admires since she can make food for humans and monsters alike. However, they already found out that she was confessed to yesterday, so they immediately asked her about the guy and what her reply was. But Mero asked them to calm down and informed them that it was Mr. Slime Trainer, who's also the one Alice had been interested in for so long. But she also assured Alice that crests don't matter when it comes to love. After that, she instructed the old ladies to scram and leave this matter to her, but they reminded her that she's about to hit 30 years old too. After they left, she then invited Alice to make a bento which took her by surprise and made Mero wonder why but she understood since she's a woman too and informed her that if yesterday was an in-school battle to decide the teams, then today is an extracurricular lesson for research, and that's why Alice must give all she got since she's on the same team as Rain. But this made Alice ask her how much she knows about them, to which she answered that she's a former student after all. Furthermore, it's also convenient for her to have a crest suited for cooking with the help of her spirit called Bonnie. After witnessing that, Alice then pointed out that she and Gazette have the same spirit crest, though Mero clarified that hers has such a small chest. Nevertheless, they must make something tasty for that super weak slime and his partner since, when they get hungry, they must do their best to show off their skill. Upon hearing this, Alice immediately answered yes since she also can't calm down because she and the others need to give their best on their four-man team's extracurricular lesson. Upon arriving, Rain pointed out that the other parties have already reached the forest, but their party is only starting now relate because they have such an impressive oversleeper. But Irina clarified that she already gave them an explanation for it. However, she also wonders why she's in party with Rain, to which he responds that it was all done based on results of yesterday's ranking battle, but she's not in the position to complain after what happened. With that, she proceeded to complain to Alice for not waking her up, but she answered that she thought she would get up on time, so Irina informed her that she already made an extra effort yesterday, but she was still a surly riser. Putting that aside, Rain informed them that they will leave without them, but he was scolded instead by Alice for having the nerves to leave his own lover behind. After hearing this, he then remembered what he said but he didn't think that Irina would still be so worked up about it. Still, this is his only option so he offered his hand to go together with Alice, but this surprised her while Irina then questioned what he's doing to which he answered that he's planning to hold her hand on their way. In response, she offered her hand instead but he only looked at it and pointed out that she's growing her nails. She then asked Rain to stop lying since Alice already told her yesterday that all that about the two of them going out was a lie, which made him exclaim that it seems her stories and Alice's did match up but he is way out of it now. However, Gazette suddenly intervened and asked if there was any evidence that this story was true, which confused her so he further explained that it's about what Alice said to Irina since they know that Alice is a thoroughly soft-hearted person, even if they consider how it is with close friends. To put it bluntly, he insisted that Rain and Alice were going out right after they got into this school, 
but Irina refuted his claim because Alice told her that she has the same utter lack of experience with men just like her, but he added that Alice who is Sky, would not be eating meals with a boy other than him, and also her guard dog Leon wouldn't allow him near her. After Leon also agreed, she immediately questioned Alice why she lied to her, but Gazette answered that it's because Alice did not want to hurt her true friend and didn't mean anything bad by it. So as her childhood friend, Gazette asked her to forgive her but Rain realized that he's the same as ever for making up the story. With that, Arena finally agreed and suggested that they pretend this whole incident never happened since they are playing at being lovers after all, though it must be so nice for him to call out her name softly, but he answered that he doesn't remember calling her. On the other hand, Alice grabbed Gazette and asked him why he lied like that, but he only answered that it was the play of the century, but she disagreed because Arena hasn't calmed down at all. Nonetheless, he still thinks that this is the perfect chance since it was Rain who brought up the whole thing, and if she wants to ensnare Rain then she must use this connection and make it a fait accompli. But hearing this made her blush, so Rain immediately checked on her, but she assured her that nothing is going on. And there's also the fact that they are still students. Still, Gazette clarified that what he would like to say is that love has nothing to do with age but that would be weird, so it's up to Alice to make the most of this chance. Furthermore, he is Rain's roommate so she can ask him if she's interested in being alone with Rain in a room. On the other hand, Rain noticed that Arena was pouting so much but she answered that she's not pouting, and she just wants to vent on someone this rage that she's feeling. So she started wondering if she must let Kiel start a special training right there or whether she should buy up all the street stall meats and drive them out of business, but Rain called her name and asked her to give it a rest. Upon hearing it, she quickly asked him to say once more her name, which made him confused, but he still repeated her name. As a result, she finally felt satisfied while Gazette then reminded them that they still need to go to the forest because they are already late, to which she agreed and asked if they should get their things and move. However, they were halted when they saw a child grabbing Leon, so they immediately asked what happened. But she quickly hid from Arena, so Rain asked her not to scare her, but she clarified that it wasn't her but it was Kiel who she's scared of. So Kiel then immediately apologized. Regardless, they proceed to ask her name and where her parents are. In response, she tells them that her mother and Creel went somewhere, but they don't know who Creel is so she explains that Creel is a Hyokin which is her mother's friend and somehow similar to Leon. With that, Rain asked Gazette for the time to which he replied that they will be screwed if they don't get going but Alice declared that they can't just leave the girl, while Arena then suggested to get her to the ERG watch station, but they informed her that the nearest station is a 20 minute walk. In response, she pointed out that it's the child's fault for getting lost and if her parents can't find her then they will go there. However, they have their own tasks so they don't have time to dawdle. With that, Rain decided to let them go to the forest first while he will deliver the kid to the watch station and come right after. But Irina disagreed because it will take him so much time, but he insisted that they can't just leave her in the middle of the crowd. As a result, she volunteered to deliver the kid with Kiel since he's faster than Rain if he plans to run, but he reminded her not to be rash because Kiel can't just dash straight through town at full speed. Furthermore, Kiel can't fly for long periods since he's not fully mature yet, Though the others think that it's better if they all go together but Rain answered that him and Pem will be fine because they always do long runs. After hearing this, Arena began to wonder why would he go that far when the Earth Kingdom has peace and security, but Gazette answered that it's because Rain is an underdog and as someone who has carried the slime crest since birth, it's just a against his nature to overlook weak ones like that. Moreover, Rain has quite a few brothers which may have just reinforced it, but regardless of that, they should not delay any further nor should they let Rain use his physical ability because today, they'd form parties to conduct team battles. However, Irina has no idea what he's talking about but he still proceeds to ask her for a favor, which she immediately questioned but he reminded her that they will be late if she doesn't do it, while Kiel on the other hand assured her that he will teach her not to oversleep in the future. Hence, she commanded Kiel to use Breath Spiral and this immediately took everyone's attention as they thought that there's a battle or some monster stunt. On the other hand, her team questioned what she was doing so she answered that they should ask Gazette instead who then tapped on his partner Pikachu to help him. But she answered that she hates crowds, so he assured her that he will ask Alice to make her special cookies later. At last, she finally came out and asked his wish, so he then asked her to help the kid who's looking for her mother with a similar electromagnetic wave. In response, PQ reminded him to ask her more honestly next time, but she still proceeded to use her skill and finally found the mother in the outermost ring of people. After that, Izette then thanked her by giving her a kiss, but he was scolded instead, as he took it to an inappropriate level again. 
but he explains that he just wants to be generous in expressing his affection to Herb, but setting that aside, she still found the girl so the other two will do the finale to which they immediately realized. On the other hand, the girl's mother continued to look for the girl, but she was interrupted when Leon suddenly came out with the girl behind his back. At last, the mother and daughter finally meet again. Meanwhile, Rain and the others saw that Leon and Pem are finally back so they immediately set off to the forest, but they were suddenly called by the girl to thank them, which made them think that they might make for an unexpectedly good team. But Irina exclaimed that it's all thanks to her to which Alice also agreed. In the forest, Rain and Pem found themselves pursued by a wild boar. So Gazette and Piku sprang into action and unleashed a volt wave to electrocute the boar, allowing Rain to command Pem to execute a ramming attack. However, this made him wonder what kind of fight was that while Gazette added that the subjugation exercise should have been an easy clear, but it seems that the situation here is odd. Nevertheless, he still commanded Pem to go after the next one, but they realized that it was a Mandragora and it immediately threw Pem away, leaving him unable to move because of the paralysis nerve poison. In response, Gazette commanded Piku to back Pem up, but they noticed the other monsters coming and might not make it in time. However, Pem was grabbed by Leon who came with Alice. On the other hand, the Mandragora were all burned by Kiel while Irina then reprimanded Rain for giving her a hard time with small fry like this, so she asked him to move around a little more cautiously, but he just thanked the girls for saving. With that, Alice called Leon to continue while Irina still can't forget the fact that Rain can't deal with a small fry monster like that, but he explains that it's because Pem is not good at fighting anything. Alice then informs them that Pem is fine but the paralysis is not wearing off, and they already ran out of paralysis remover earlier so she doesn't know what to do, but Rain on the other hand has this urge to give Pem a good whack. Regardless of that, he suggested suspending the fighting for an hour since Arena was right, and they can hardly expect any experience at all by taking on small fry. Furthermore, he knows that Alice might be pretty tired too, but Arena called him out for only being concerned about Alice, and he explains that it's because Alice is a girl. After hearing this, Arena just gave up while Rain was left asking if she has a problem with that, but he was interrupted by Gazette who tells them that something is strange because of the rate of the monsters they encounter, and their numbers are a bit aggressive. Moreover, it's definitely not normal for Juru bears to appear since they dwell deeper in the forest like the Mandragora, but it seems that the forest is restless today, and if they go any deeper then it might be dangerous. But since they have already cleared the subjugation exercise, and they can harvest herbs around, then they can head back early today to which Rain also agreed, but Arena answered no and suggested to go in a little further. Since she thinks that if some calamity is indeed happening in the Uzu forest, she as a dragon trainer cannot ignore it. However, Alice informed her that Pem can hardly move so she then clarified that Kiel can compensate for the fighting power of one slime many times over, and also, she's fine with Rain depending on her. Upon hearing this, he agreed to count on her which immediately motivated her to go forward, but this made him wonder what's with her because she's quite different today, and whether she's treating him like an idiot but Gazette tells him that she's praising him in her own way. As a result, Alice also called him and asked him to depend on her too, but she was suddenly swept away by a gust of wind, so he grabbed her before she could be carried off. Meanwhile, Irina was puzzled over the source of the sudden wind, but Rain on the other hand found himself on the verge of being blown away, so Leon held him steady. Taking control of the situation, he pinned Alice down and reassured her that he would hear her complaints later once they had stabilized. However, he was scolded by Irina for taking advantage of all the confusion but she was stopped by Gazette, so he reminded him that his childhood friend is about to be attacked, but he answered that it might be for the best. After that, the wind finally subsided but she still wondered what was that and asked Kale what's wrong with him. With that, they realized that there's a dragon in front and it's a fully grown one. It's sporting both arms and legs so it's probably a grand dragon type, and its attribute might be wind because of the sudden gust of wind earlier. Meanwhile, Rain began to laugh and thought that it's great to run into a full-grown dragon, but he was interrupted by Arena who pointed them to the other students who were hiding and quickly ordered their monsters to attack the dragon. However, the dragon easily repels their attacks using only its wind pressure. As a result, Arena uses Blaze Spiral to stop the dragon and asks the students what they are doing. In response, they tell her that they were in the middle of their research when they found that dragon, and so Gold said that he was going to hunt the dragon to get one up on Arena. But Gold reprimanded Kearney for saying it so Arena ordered him to shut up. She then informed them that a dragon that has reached full growth will immediately attack people and other monsters alike are insignificant in comparison. However, to those humans who have bared their own fangs at it, 
It will not relent and only punish, especially those like them who don't recognize the difference in their status. As a result, the Wind Dragon continued to attack them, which made them panic, but Irina assured them that she would hold the dragon, so they could hurry back to campus and report. Nevertheless, this dragon is still stronger than any dragon that should be in the forest, so she asked them to her sister who's the student council president. After they left, the Wind Dragon began gathering its power to launch an attack, but Kiel promptly alerted Irina who then commanded him to unleash sonic fire to counter the assault, and believing it had ceased so she hoped to subdue it further. However, Rain warned her not to let her guard down yet. Suddenly, the wind sliced through the surrounding trees narrowly missing Irina. Since Kiel shielded her, but she remained stunned, so Rain shook her head to wake her up, which only angered her, but he suggested that she should be offering an apology instead. Regardless, they were interrupted by Gazette who asked them if they should run or fight, but if it's him, he would want to run away as fast as they can. But now that it comes this far, they ask Irina if she can talk things out with Kiel, but she answered that it still views her on the level of humans so it's impossible, and it's also impossible that the Wind Dragon will let them escape so all that's left is to power up one's crest and fight. However, she couldn't use the Emblem Raw because her strength has run out due to all the constant battles up to now, leaving them an A can they escape scenario. Regardless of that, Rain asked Gazette and Pichu if they can cover the Wind Dragon's eyes, to which Gazette answered that it's not that they can't do it, but even if Pichu is a talented meanie, getting close to that dragon is quite the difficult task. With that, he then called for the others to listen to the plan which he already made, but Alice wondered if it would be okay while Arena then asked if he's serious with that strategy. Thus, they called it the Escape from a Fully Grown Dragon strategy. Without further ado, their team immediately charges into the Wind Dragon with Alice leading Leon to create a shield and Gazette informing them that they only get one shot at this. So Alice then asked about contracting bonds, to which he answered that it would be the last move for each person, since they won't be able to escape if they become exhausted from using it. Putting that aside, they also plan to turn Pem into a decoy to get the dragon's attention and give Piku the lead role, which she could not refuse. However, he honestly tells Arena that since he has only recently started talking to her, he doesn't believe that he can completely trust her so he doesn't mind if she and Kiel flee by themselves, but she swears by her dragon crest that she will not abandon her teammates and escape, which made him ask if she's sure since she and Kiel will be in the most danger according to their plan, but she replied that she doesn't need his concern, so he then exclaimed that she's certainly a good kid though Rain knows that she will be pissed off later. Following that, the next attack came and shattered the shield so Aelia then ordered Leon to use free strike against the wind dragon while Rain took this chance to let Pem ram it in the feet but he was too slow so Leon quickly saved him. Arena then informed them that its visibility is reduced by the clouds of dust since it kicked up itself, so she had Kiel analyze it but he informed her that they do not have the power to deliver it a final blow, rather they become the perfect target, and wait what the wind dragon will do since it came out just as Gazette foresaw, knowing that only right after beginning a really big attack will its guard drop. So he then called for Pichu and used the rising sun to successfully block its sight and let everyone run as fast as they could. The next day, Arena woke up thinking about how unsightly it was for her who possessed the dragon crest to be defeated in a contest with Rain, where she said that she would go out with him if she lost, but he refused her and on top of that, Alice is now the one dating him and he's so nice to Alice but not to her. Moreover, she also fled from the wind dragon instead of standing up to it. Nevertheless, she shrugged it off and proceeded to do her morning prayers. Later in the hallway, the other girls immediately notice how perfect her form is no matter where you look at her, so they immediately run to also fix their attire, though she swears that she can't get used to it always being this way even during meals. Later at the high-ranking monster quarters, she asked Kiel if he had a good rest to which he answered yes and assured her that he will not cause his master embarrassment again, but she asked him not to worry about yesterday's incident since it was her error and it's more likely that today, they will hand down the student council's decision regarding measures against that thing from yesterday, and whether it's to capture or put it down, they will select them as members, and then they will be the one to vanquish that dragon to which Kiel swear by their oath together as she kisses him, which is the proof of their promise from when they were young, and as his master will it so. However, he wonders if she will not save this kiss for Rain whom he thinks is rather a fine male, but she replies that such jokes don't make her laugh and declare that the result of that was pure coincidence and even if she lost, she would have fulfilled the promise but he refused. She informs Kiel that they are going to where Rain is and since it's morning, he's undoubtedly on the training grounds, so they plan to liven things up before taking down the wind dragon by putting Rain out of his misery. Meanwhile, 
Pem finally dealt a total of 135 points of damage, making Rain think that he's back in shape, but he's also getting carried away since the paralysis poison missed yesterday fell squarely on him, but Pem should have been able to avoid it, since it's known that slime is the weakest monster in the word, but its elastic body in exchange for tolerance to physical attack is incredibly weak when it comes to magical attacks. Still, even though they have danger sense and hazard avoidance, the price they pay is too high. Regardless of that, he asked him to not make such a gloomy face since he knows that for a slime being abandoned by its trainer is scarier than anything else. Knowing that there are people who endowed with a crest with neither popularity nor power, so they resent their contract by Rakumin, since they think that it's embarrassing but he assured him that he would never abandon him over such stupid reasons, and he also knew that he still have more things to show, but hearing this made Pem lick him all over. Meanwhile, Irina suddenly showed up looking for him and declared that before the dragon subjugation, she and him were going to hash it out once more but she stopped when she saw Alice. After that, she then asked him if he wasn't conducting training to which he answered that he's having breakfast at the moment, so she then asked Alice who was in the dorm kitchen earlier, but she answered that Mero whacked her out to get moving, but what's surprising to them is why Irina is there so she answered that it's because she has business. Putting that aside, Alice offered the bento she made to Rain and also shared it to Pem, but seeing them acting like this made Irina somehow sad which Rain noticed. Nevertheless, she declares that she actually doesn't care what they will do or where they do it, but it seems that Rain is at the point that he gotta own up to the truth, so he then calls her by her name, but she reprimanded him for speaking casually to her. However, he noticed her sudden character switch, so he informed Kiel that he really doesn't know what's going on. Kiel then tells him that he is more blessed than he deserves, but he also noticed that him going out with Alice is not simply taking responsibility for what he said. But of course, his relationship is far too strained, and he lacks the self-awareness that rivals that of Arena. But hearing this made Rain realize that he actually didn't hide it pretty well. So Kiel explains that it's the compassion between males and the flames are at strength, so he doesn't need to worry and just become the prey for their flames of hell, which made Rain point out that he's just brimming with desire for him to be roasted and be eaten. However, their conversation was abruptly interrupted by a girl searching for Arena. Upon noticing her emblem, they realized she was from the student council executive committee. She informed Arena that she had a notice from the student council president and asked if it was acceptable to read it in front of everyone. She then asks if it's about the wind dragon incident that she's been waiting for, since she and Kiel have already steeled their wills to go have her a match with it. The girl then read the letter to Arena, which declared her exclusion from the dragon subjugation team. After hearing that she and Kiel were excluded from the dragon subjugation, Arena hurriedly went to ask the meaning of this to her older sister Ariel. Upon seeing Arena's sister for the first time, they couldn't deny her incredible presence, knowing that she is a god user type, which is even rarer than the dragon user, and the possessor of that miracle crest is said to be one in a million. But before Arena could complain, she was immediately reprimanded by Ariel for being so full of herself, and pointed out that it's embarrassing in front of her schoolmates to act unladylike because of her composure. Upon hearing this, she then realized that they followed her but she clarified that Alice is her companion, but Rain is certainly not his friend, which made Ariel ask if he's perhaps her boyfriend to which she answered no. But Ariel continued to point out that he seems a rather nice man, and speculated that he's the slime trainer who trounced her and Kiel in a simulated battle recently. But this made Arena wonder how did she know while Rain thinks that she's such an idiot. Putting that aside, she asked her what's the meaning of excluding her from the subjugation team when she already delivered the report to the student council yesterday to become a member. Ariel then answered that it was a decision made in haste by the one who received the report, so it is true that they were originally added to the subjugation members, but Kiel's true strength and hers are insufficient for taking down a wind dragon. However, Irina disagreed so Ariel added that they received a report that they fled back and were helpless against the wind dragon to which she explained that Kiel was just exhausted at that time, and that's important in subjugating a dragon to have a dragon trainer. Furthermore, she thinks that it would be troublesome for Ariel to arrange a replacement for her in time for tomorrow's subjugation, but Ariel tells her that she doesn't need to be worried about that. So she then called Sarah, who introduced herself as the leading dragon trainer in the neighboring country's training academy. After knowing that she's also a dragon trainer just like Arena, Arena wanted to declare that she's Bijiam's dragon trainer, but she remembered what Ariel said about her being defeated by a slime trainer, which made her think that Ariel has already given up on her after she lost twice to a slime trainer. Upon seeing her expression, Ariel assured her that she knows what she's feeling, but she still repeated that Arena is excluded from the Wind Dragon subjugation unit, 
and asked if she had no objections but Rain noticed her hands. Regardless, Ariel exclaimed that it's nothing to be depressed over since it is the same as how a dragon trainer cannot win against a god trainer because everything is already predetermined. However, Rain called her out and says that he knows it is often said that their status is decided by fate and that the difference in ranking is by what they have at birth. But he wonders if those god crest dragon crest devil crest and angel crest are something to be so haughty over. With that, Ariel pointed out that he has such a frightening expression, but he continued declaring that whatever crest one may have and whatever monster one has partnered with, that has nothing to do with it because the crest alone is not a reason to hold oneself over others. However, Ariel asked him what he's getting at so he explained that it's the meaning behind her words, and since she is the student council president, they will defer to her word as students but not because she is a good trainer. And even him do not actually want to defer to the words of a narrow-minded president who won't listen. After that, he asked Alice and Arena to leave but he was asked by Arena if he realized what he's saying and to whom he's saying it. To which he answered that he knows it perfectly well which made her think that he's standing up for her. Suddenly, Ariel asked to have a moment of his time and asked about what he said in not wanting to defer to a god trainer. But every single monster by nature grovels before a god instinctively. And the revelation of God is a providence of nature, so even if he doesn't accept it, the difference in ranking is a reality of this world, which helps the world to turn smoothly. With that in mind, she proceeds to ask him if it's his hope to rebel against the world system. In response, he said the words Kaluna Marnax, which made them wonder if that was a person's name. But Ariel finally understood the path he was aiming for and pointed out that he appears to be a fool, but he is a very dangerous man. However, he answered that she's overestimating him when he's just a foolish man who brought an argument with gods. Later at the dorm, Izet commented that there's no end to Rain's foolishness, and if he were a monster he would certainly bow to the fool crest, which made Rain pissed off. But at the same time, he knows that it's still not enough since the god trainer's existence is by no means merely a title because just being born with the god's crest, many lead the trainer's path for not being able to bear the weight of it such is the trainer crushing crest of destruction. But it also means that they has the strength and capability to make a god submit. Nonetheless, Rain still won't change so Gazette asked him what he's going to do now after he spouted all of that blather in front of the president, and if they are going to go take down the wind dragon in stealth, then there's something Rain could do to recommend Arena's participation. But Rain asked him why he should do that. Upon hearing this, Izet commented that he's really single-minded and is sued to be a smile master, to which he answered that it's better not to raise trouble. So Gazette then explains that Arena is influenced by him and he could easily get her to act, but he thinks that it's not like that, and that no matter how impulsive she is she won't be easily led astray, which he also doubts. Nevertheless, he thinks that Arena is powerful too, but Gazette reminded him that she is the same girl who got careless against a slime trainer and lost twice. But his question is if he could fight someone who has no chance of winning and with the strength of a will not to lose, he thinks that she have a good fight with him. However, they were stopped when they noticed the writing in the window that says Arena and Kiel are going to the forest. Immediately, they went outside and saw Leon and Alice who told them that Arena left behind a letter saying that she's going to capture the wind dragon, which they could not believe so Gazette then asked her if she already showed it to the teachers, but she answered not yet. But they also know that going absent without leave after curfew will cause her to get house arrest in the dorm, or even be expelled if they find out. Nevertheless, Izette suggested contacting the academy first since they might be able to deal with it amicably if they explain it well. But Rain disagreed because he thinks that Ariel cannot be counted on because her position takes precedence over any sisterly feelings she may have, so there's no way she will easily forgive Arena. Furthermore, Arena herself rejects the decision of her godlike sister, so being told that she's no good may be the heaviest punishment, though Gazette thinks that half of the responsibility of all that is Rain's. Putting that aside, he asked Rain what they will do since it might come off as rude to Arena who's planning to go against that wind dragon with Kiel. In response, he exclaimed that it is the reason why he and Pem are going, which Gazette already expected him to say while Alice asked him if he's serious. So he then answered yes since he knows that her personality is definitely not one to ask for outside help, but if the worst should happen, he can take over with Pem. On the other hand, the two think that he seems to be having fun with this and are truly the most simple-minded duo planning to fight the wind dragon. Nevertheless, Alice informed him that he can't get outside, but he answered that the guard gates are busy with those going home, and if he succeeds, he plans to get back in by using the cave he found on the way to the morning ranking, where he also saw that there's no monster camping there. Upon hearing this, Izet asked him if there's still enough space for another pair to get in aside from Arena and him, including Kiel and Pem. 
He then answered that there would be no problem, but if the other two also go, no one will answer the roll call. But Gazette informed him that today's roll caller is that lazy teacher Devan, so it would be fine. Furthermore, if he were to skip out on such an interesting battle and he'd wonder why he was friends with Rain in the first place, which made Rain exclaim that he wounded him horribly. On the other hand, Alice also called him and asked him if there's still a space for one more pair to which he answered yes, while Gazette then teased them by saying that it would be a little cramped, so they must leave Rain and Alice alone. Regardless of that, Rain exclaimed that it's finally settled to go against God and the Wind Dragon to rise up against their superiors. Inside the forest, Arena's whole body was already complaining from sharing the contracting bond. Furthermore, she can't believe that the Wind Dragon has this much of a difference in power. Since when she came without telling Alice and the others, she was so firm in belief that they could take it down if they were in perfect condition. However, their attacks can't penetrate its emerald scales that have been protecting its life for hundreds of years. So this is utterly a one-sided fight, but Kiel asked her to not make such a pathetic face since she is his master. With that, she began to realize that she's such a fool and wondered if she was insignificant. But for the first time, she now understood the utter complete difference and in a world where everything ranks higher than they do, Rain and Pem continue to fight unlike her. However, Kiel suddenly alerted her about the Wind Dragon's attack and its target is her, since feral monsters think nothing of human lives. In response, Kiel asked her to direct him because he can still fight but she answered that it's already enough and proceeded to undone the contracting bond. She then explains that this is all due to her own ego, so she wouldn't forgive herself if he got hurt. However, the name of Rain suddenly came to her mind and thought that the words he threw to her sister may have been to protect her and this made her somehow happy. And now as she looked at him, she realized the strength of the weakest and painful as it is. The one who is the fool is clear, but even though she may be the strongest incapable one, she is still a monster trainer, and as a trainer like him, she aspires to be strong like him for there's no one tougher than him in her eyes. As thoughts of rain flood her mind, the wind dragon finally unleashes its attack, prompting Kiel to urge her to flee. Suddenly, she hears someone commanding Pem to expand, and a warm sensation washes over her which made her wonder why Rain would appear before her and thought that it's a fam. However, she suddenly felt the sensation of being breathless and soon realized that she was drowning. After landing, she scolded them for dropping out of nowhere but Rain scolded her back for removing her contracting bond and going strolling unprotected. In response, she explained that it's her responsibility, and it's also her responsibility to not listen to her sister and challenge an opponent far outclassing her but she wondered why he would stop her. He then answered that it's to obviously make her lose, since suffering a defeat doesn't mean it's the end. Moreover, he thinks that it would be a bad thing for her to give up now, especially with the mark on her right hand right now. Upon seeing her contracting bond, she realized that she subconsciously reactivated it. On the other hand, Heel exclaimed that this is not all there is to the breath of a wind dragon because there should be a second strong wind or even a third. After stopping the wind dragon and ensuring Arena's safety, Kiel finally fell down and proceeded to thank Rain and Pem for saving Arena. Regardless of that, Arena then apologized to him, but he only pointed out that they have lost again. In response, she asked him to stop saying the word lose, while Rain then teased her for crying and also informed her that it would be her win right now. But she must always remember that he will always be stronger than her, which made Arena's chest feel hot. However, they were interrupted by Gazette who commented that they fit together perfectly, but he was pushed aside by Alice who immediately scolded Arena for doing something dangerous like that. With that, Arena realized that they also broke the curfew to come so she then apologized to them and asked Alice to stop crying. Meanwhile, Izette began to ask Rain if he did something wrong, to which he answered that he always does while Alice added that he's already old enough to know not to play around in the mud. On the other hand, the wind dragon started going in rage again, so Gazette then asked if it's the time to not run away, to which Rain responded that no one is running away, especially Pem and him. However, Irina tried stopping him and even asked Gazette to do something about the two, but he asked her instead if she still thinks that it's just a coincidence when she lost the fight to Rain. She then answered that it's a different situation than when it was between Kiel and the dragon since this is simply death, but Gazette responded that it is true that Kiel and the Wind Dragon are of different statutes. So if all the physical advantages outweighed those granted by the contract, he wouldn't engage in combat either. But that's exactly why he can positively state that the dragon is far more suitably matched with Pem than with Kiel. But hearing this made her ask if he's seriously saying that, to which he answered that they are completely different from before, making him wonder what kind of fight will the incapable monster and trainer 
have since it's emblazoned in those eyes. With that, the slime trainer launched his counterattack. Rain, they hurriedly ordered Pem to execute a ramming attack and show them the slime that nobody would take notice of and laughed at as the world's weakest and the monster trainer with that crest inscribed on him. As she guessed, Arena knew that he would use ramming attacks but at that level of power, it would just bounce us off, which is considered as laughable attacks for the Wind Dragon. After not having any effects, the Wind Dragon then took its turn to attack them and blow them away. While Arena then figured out that it's a delayed shockwave, and if it can do this with one swipe of its tail, there's no way it was fighting Kiel and her seriously, which is not entirely surprising since no matter how agile Pem's movements, he will have a hard time if the surrounding terrain is demolished. Meanwhile, Rain exclaimed that it's awesome but he doesn't care so he can get stronger as much as he can but he's certain that they will win. However, Irina reminded him that Pem won't be able to take it if he were to be hit by an adult dragon with a rock-hard body, but he answered that slimes are well known for their resilience so they can use their bodies to fend off physical attacks. Upon hearing this, she then realized that he used the centrifugal force from the tail swipe to get out of range of the air blast. While Gazette then added that it would be over in one hit, so rather than superior defense that's only skin deep, the weak class of monster with the speed to escape has a high rate of survival, but she thinks that just running away won't be helpful. Nevertheless, it's fine if his partner gets smashed as long as he himself isn't hit which is clever, but if Pem's blown away and he can't make it in time. However, he managed to dodge an invisible wind attack since Pem is sharing what he possesses with him which is his sense of danger, knowing that he is always one step away from death. In that case, he can't help but to dodge too which surprised Alice that he took on a slime's traits to dodge the dragon's attack. As the wind dragon's attack misses him, he declares that Pem is the weakest but the weakest of the weakest is the strongest. But of course it was still hopeless to just ward off those attacks so Arena asked him to run. But he disagreed, knowing that the dragon's defenses are already down, so he called Pem to ram the wind dragon, but there's no reaction, which means that the differences in power and physique are just too great. Since before an adult dragon, a slime is lower than an infant and literally the same as a worm, but he declares that there's no need to worry since the wind dragon let his guard down, which they've been waiting for so he then ordered Pem to attack. After getting hit, it could not believe that he used its own ability to cause an explosion inside its mouth, which is the same technique he used against Arena and Kiel before which works precisely because of the dragon's power. Nevertheless, it's not a simple feat to turn one's own power against them. After that, Rain and Pem began to feel the exhaustion, as Pem got caught in the backlash of the explosion, so his damage transferred to him. Upon seeing the damage, Arena speculated that both of them will be ragged if Pem lost what physical strength the slime has so she asked them to just stop, and even asked Gazette's help to put a stop to the fight so they could retreat. But he didn't move, so she clarified that it doesn't matter how well they match up in the battle, but some things that can't be won can't be just won. However, Rain asked her to stop saying such pathetic stuff, since the real fun starts now. Following that they hit the wind dragon again and it seems their power is going up but not only that, the damage they suffered is also going away. After managing to hold out, he then ready Pem to win but seeing them in this state made Arena wonder if she's dreaming because they seem to be using sublimation. Aside from that, Izette commented that those two might be able to pull it off, but she disagreed because sublimation is not something they can make happen. And what's more is that they activated it only days before so there's no way they could already make it. Regardless of that, Rain and Pem took their turn to attack which surprised them with how powerful this slime is. Still, she thinks that taking it head on is impossible because of their difference in strength. As a result, Pem was blown away, but the splinters caught him and the elasticity of them became like a spring, so the blunt attack head on was just to get ready for this. Therefore, Rain declares that this won't be enough to finish them off and proceeds to strike the wind dragon. Finally, the wind dragon is blown away so the others immediately ask Rain if he managed to defeat it. However, he responds that he didn't believe his attack would be enough to defeat it. True to his words, it appears to be over and the miraculous counterattack didn't yield the desired outcome, which lead Arena to conclude that nothing can be changed.